Hi, this is Mike Chambers, and I'm going to show a quick example of how you can get a full Bash shell uh, in Windows. So I actually recently just switched to Windows as my primary machine at home. I did this primarily for, um, I wanted to build my own uh, computer. I like to, I to play a lot of video games. And you, while you can do that on Mac, you, building a Hackintosh, you don't have as much flexibility on the type of hardware you can do. So I'm spending most of my time in Windows. I actually find it's not too bad, um, but when it comes to development, it's actually kind of a hassle. And most of that reason is because of this thing here, the Windows console. And so this is a Windows thing, you know, and I come from a Mac background and I use a lot of Linux, so I'm used to having a nice shell um, uh, ideally running bash um, you know you don't have that on windows you have the kind of this windows thing don't have all the commands and tools you want and this shell this actual window is a nightmare I mean I can't resize it it's just it, to be honest it's it's a joke um, so I've actually um, had installed Sigwin and that's kind of the go-to solution for this type of thing and it provides a, a POSIX or UNIX type environment. Although it does have some limitations and specifically I ran into some issues where um, you know some of the tool chains don't always compile for it or support it and more specifically I had to get node running and it's having some issues with that. So I decided I was going to solve this once for all because really is what I want is you know the customization of Windows ability to run any hardware I can um, with the ability uh, to have a full bash shell and a nice terminal window. So the way I solved that was kind of maybe a brute force method, but basically I uh, installed VMware and then and, uh, downloaded the Ubuntu server. And the reason I did Ubuntu server is because I only need a terminal and I want it to be as lightweight as possible. One of the things that's nice about Ubuntu server is that uh, there's no GUI uh, so it's pretty lightweight, but also it only in it installs the bare minimum. So you you don't have a bunch of stuff you don't need, and then it's really easy using app git to install stuff that you want. So I've installed it here. You can see the Ubuntu server. There's a couple of things you need to do, uh, first of all, to set this up. And so we'll go into the virtual machine settings. There's actually two key things. Um, the first is that you want to set the um, network adapter to bridged. Um, you could probably also set this to NAT uh, to share the address, but I have it bridged. So basically what that does is it, it gives the um, Ubuntu server running in the virtual machine its own IP address. Uh, so you can uh, connect to it via SSH or HTTP or whatever you're doing. Uh, the other thing is, let's see if I can find this, is shared, I have share folders enabled. And you can see I'm sharing my home directory. And it's what this allows me to do, and this is actually the most important thing, it allows me to map my Windows drive from the virtual machine. Um, and that's actually what makes the link between the two. So let's go ahead and uh, fire this up. So again, I've already installed it. It's going to boot up um, Ubuntu server. It'll take just a second. And then as soon as it boots up, and actually, so that's all. So we actually don't have to do anything. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually log in here and just use this as my terminal. Um, but I actually don't like, as you know, my mouse isn't, it captures my mouse. So that's kind of a pain. So what I do is I actually run putty. Um, and now I'm going to uh, SSH into it. So if you run ifconfig, ah, shoot, config. To find your IP address, and you see mine is 10 0 uh, So I'm going to type that in here, 10. And again, you could probably set this up for NAT. It, it might work better, but I have it bridged right now. And so I'm basically going to SSH into my own machine. Now, usually is what I do at this point. So I'll log in, put in my password. And so now I essentially have... Uh, a really nice full featured Unix shell uh, running bash on my Windows machine. So you can see I have all the commands I want. Now I've, all, I've mapped two drive or three specifically. Windows gets to my home directory and that's only, and I usually don't use that. The two main ones I use are source, which is my source tree. So I go in here, you know, see this project uh, spectral kitten. I can run my git command, so do a pull. 
Let's see if anything's going on. And everything's up to date. Um, so I'm mostly just in source. And this is actually, if you look on Windows, then here's the source directory also. So that's actually the same directory. Um, and if I do something like, let's see, let's go into temp, which is actually right here. And I'll just create a simple file, you know, touch hello world. Okay, and you see that file appears there. And the thing that's nice then is I can actually, let's see, let's touch foo.txt. So I can create that. And then I can edit it on Windows. Right, you know, this is a test. We'll save that. And if we go over here, you can see, you know, I'm pretty much working on, on the same, yeah, I am exactly working on the same file. So basically, um, it provides all the advantages of a Unix environment, um, but on Windows. Um, the only issue I've run into is every now and then I'll, I'll delete a folder and, and then recreate it. And let's see if there's one in here. Um, and it just gets in a weird state where the Linux or uh, Linux can't understand the permissions on it. I've actually had that happen twice. I actually had to reboot Windows both times. So that's been kind of a hassle, but the benefits far, far outweigh it. Um, now, one other thing is that, you know, I do a lot of web development on here and I need to launch servers. Um, so the way that works is, so let's go into Spectral Tiger and I'll launch this. So I can actually launch servers here and access them uh, on my desktop. So let's see. This is just a little project I've been working on. Run server. And then for Python, you actually have to map map it or it'll bind to uh, 127. So we'll just do that 8,000, right? So basically I'm running the server now. Now if I go back over here, I say I'm going to go to 10, right? And you can see now I'm actually running that off the Linux uh, machine here. You can see everything going on there. Looks like I have some errors in there. Got to figure that out. So, anyways, um, it takes a little bit of setup, not too much actually, um, but once you get it running, it works great, uh, and you get all the advantages of all the, you know, the you get your choice of hardware and all the games and everything you want, everything that Windows is good at. But you also get a lot of the advantages of having a uh, a full Unix uh, system shell and actually a nice terminal window that you can resize. Uh, you know, welcome to 2012 Windows. Um, <laughs> anyways, I, I actually like Windows, so I don't want to give it too hard a time. But anyways, just something useful I wanted to share. Uh, so check it out.